I grew up actually in Maryland down around the Potomac River and I have fished some of the tidal rivers up here so I know that some of you guys do some of that stuff and there's there's a lot of interesting things about fishing tidal rivers and uh, you know one of the things that you always hear about is how the tide affects the fishing in the tidal rivers and uh, I'm not going to get into a whole bunch of stuff about that in particular but just so everybody kind of knows that the moon going around the earth that's kind of you know it has its own gravitational pull and that's what affects the, the tides and what makes the tides go up and down that's all of that lesson we're getting into today <laughs> nobody wants to hear a bunch of stuff about that that is one not entertaining and well I just like to entertain so there you go um, but it does seriously affect the bass and how they how they set up on cover how they feed when they feed basically most of the time when we're talking about you know there are some some smallmouth in in some of the tidal rivers around here in the northeast and the mid-atlantic um, but most of the time what we're going to be talking about today basically is largemouth um, you know a lot of them the hudson river and all those you know they they have smallmouth in them they have smallmouth all in the potomac even you get further south than that, the Rappahannock River, the James River, they're smallmouth. But it's, it's a smaller population, and we're not really going to break that down today. We're going to break down largemouth and, and tidal water. And one of the things that's so frustrating about tidal water is how the fish tend to really bite in spurts. And the only reason that they do that is basically because they're really lazy. And, and it is. I mean, a, a largemouth bass other than in certain little times, whether it's tidal water or not, is kind of a lazy guy. Like, and and there's, there are definitely times when they're very active, but what I'm speaking about most of the time right now, and in general over the next 45 minutes or so, is going to be generalities, what happens most of the time. You know, when I say something, I'm trying to help you guys learn and be able to catch more bass as best that I can. There's always going to, I want everybody to understand this, there's always going to be little situations that a lot of you will probably remember when I say something and you're going to say, oh, well, heck, I remember this time when this happened is exactly contrary to what he's saying. Absolutely, because fish are fish. They don't always do the same things. But there's definitely generalities where a lot of times they do the same things. And that's kind of what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, but the lazy thing, largemouth bass innately are lazy, and that's when, when you put the tidal influence into their specific behavior, it kind of makes them more lazy, simply because they only want to feed when conditions are, are extremely right for them, you know, when the tide's at, at certain levels. And, and what we're going to break down today um, is kind of how they move around with the tide and how they want to change, and then there's an X factor that is going to be kind of at the end of when I'm talking to you guys today that is going to pretty much take out about 75% of everything I'm going to tell you about over the next probably 30 minutes. Right at the end, I'm going to give you an X factor that's going to take a lot of that out to play. But in the end, it's all going to come together. So the first thing, most of the tidal rivers around in the, the mid-Atlantic, this area, north and south a little bit, most of them have a lot of what we call hard cover. And hard cover is rocks and docks and things like that. As you can see on here, rocks, docks. I would also consider in hard cover to be lily pads and reeds. Grass, underwater grass, is what I would consider, you know, grass to be soft cover. So, like I said, I'm considering lily pads and reeds as hard cover. That's the kind of stuff that doesn't really move around as the tides go up and down. So there's different ways that we want to fish any of that stuff, and there's different ways that the fish will set up on that stuff as the water moves up and down. And as you go further south, the tidal influence is a little bit less. Like I said, I grew up in Maryland, you know, cut my teeth fishing there. Um, the tidal influence in Maryland on the Potomac River is going to be a little less than, than, say, on the Hudson River north of here, where 
you know, on the Hudson. I'm just using generalities, I, you know, when there's a lot higher wind or something like that. But, you know, you have a good three or four foot tidal swing on the Hudson River, whereas on the Potomac River, under normal conditions, you're going to have maybe a two and a half foot tidal swing. If you go all the way to the St. John's River in Florida, where I live now, it's Mike Iaconelli. This is Bash U TV. Here's what's awesome about Bash U TV. You get the top instructors. Real tools that help you catch more fish consistently. And that's why you want to check out Bash U TV. Join the Bass U family. Welcome to Bass U TV.